If I said in a debate that I would not debate with a Pakistani, I would rightly be called a racist. My question for you is, are you a racist? Why are you applauding that? Why are you, what kind of people would applaud that? Am I a racist? You've sat through the last hour and a half of me speaking, and you're applauding someone asking me if I'm a racist? What kind of people are you? Or do you just applaud anything? Would you just applaud anything? You made a better job of it than your friend. I'll grant you that talking to me in a language I don't understand and then waving an Israeli flag in my face was not, I suspect, the finest moment that he will experience in what I hope is a long life in public affairs. <laughs> I, I'll let you in on something you don't know. I'm one of the few people on the left in Britain who traveled the length and breadth of apartheid South Africa as an underground agent of the African National Congress led by Nelson Mandela, then in Paul's Moor Prison in Cape Town. Therefore, the subject of apartheid is particularly important to me. The question of racism is particularly important to me. And in parenthesis, let me tell you this, that throughout the entirety of my time underground in South Africa, under apartheid, every house I slept in, every dinner I ate, every car I drove in was provided by Jewish activists of the African National Congress. So Jews don't have to be on the side of apartheid. They don't have to be on the side of racism. <laughs> Jewish, Jewish heroes amongst my blood brotherhood, like Dennis Goldberg, who served 27 years on Robben Island in Paulsmoor Prison, but who never was able to touch Mandela and his comrades because they were on one side of the apartheid prison wall and he and a few other Jewish heroes of the African National Congress were on the other. Dennis Goldberg, Albi Sachs, Joe Slovo, Ruth First. Perhaps you've heard of these people. If you haven't, look them up. Jews don't have to be on the side of apartheid. They can stand up against it. And I say to those who imagine that they are friends of the state whose flag was just waved in my face, turn away from the racist apartheid ideology of Zionism. Turn back to where Jews were before the emergence and the hegemony of Zionism. The greatest people on the earth were Jews. The leaders of the socialist, communist, trade union, liberal, enlightenment throughout the 17th, 18th, 19th centuries were great Jews. Marx himself was a Jew. None of them believed that as Jews, they should go and take somebody else's country and drive millions of them around the world as refugees. All of them would have turned their back against such an ideology. But because of my experience in South Africa, which included, by the way, being battered and bloodied by a Scottish South African policeman called Campbell. It's one of the reasons why I hate Alistair Campbell so much. <laughs> in Guguletu police station, 
in the Guguletu Township in Cape Town, although the policeman had eventually to wash my feet in public, in penitence. But that's another story. Because of my time in South Africa, because of the decades that I worked against apartheid in South Africa, do you imagine that I would turn up at a university and debate apartheid with a supporter from South Africa of the apartheid system. I'd rather punch him in the face than debate with him. Why? Because apartheid is a racist poison. It is the worst kind of fascism. And I would never debate with any supporter of South African apartheid. Why should I debate with a supporter of Israeli apartheid? I have two questions to ask you. The first, you spoke very eloquently about uh, freeing the peoples backed by what you turned Western-backed dictatorships from the oppression uh, pushed upon them. Yeah, you vocally supported the re-election of a man in Venezuela named Hugo Chavez, who frequently shuts down opposition television stations, frequently jails any journalist who criticizes him, specifically when Global Vision covered prison riots, which Venezuelan prison governors brutally suppressed prisoners. That television station was immediately shut down. So how, how, where is the freedom of expression and freedom of dissent for Venezuelan opposition leaders? Uh, especially considering that Mr. Mr. Uh, Capriles was never given any television coverage. He was not allowed <laughs> the oil subsidies oh, that yeah. Chavez used to enough, fund his campaign. Already. And a second enough. question, it, it, to clarify this man's point, you were on the right stuff. Iran executed a 16 and a 17 year old uh, boy, uh, widely acknowledged by human rights activists, for being gay, live on television, publicly broadcasted at executions. You said, don't worry, These are just, the, the Iranian government has told me they are, they are paedophiles. Did so I really the, the, say that? The, yeah, yes you did. Did I really On say the right that? stuff. So did I the really concern, say so what my, pause my point for a is, second. my point is. Pause for a second, yes. and then tell the audience if I really said yes. that. You said. Don't the, worry. Yes, you said. The, you, you just quoted me. Yes. Don't worry. The Iranian government has said these men are paedophiles, so we should not be. So they were not executed. Did for I being say that? Gay. Yes. Secondly, uh, so m I think to clarify his point, how should LGBT people feel uh, about you being elected, specifically um, your position on the equal marriage bill as well? Thank you. Well, I'm in favour of the equal marriage bill. I was in favour of the equalisation of the age of consent when three quarters of the parliament voted against it. That's what I got the Stonewall Award for. I mean. I know that a little knowledge is dangerous. Your problem is you've got a little knowledge about everything about which you have spoken. You have utterly, you have utterly distorted. You have utterly distorted my, my record on gay rights. You have utterly distorted what I said on the right stuff, as a moment's contemplation will tell you. Do you really think that I said it's all right about the hanging of someone? when I'm against the death penalty in any country, for anything, at any time? Do you really think I said it's all right that they hang somebody in public? Think what you're saying, young man, before you publicly smear people in this way. Now look, what you just said about Venezuela is so far from the truth I have to imagine you wandered in here. You're not really a student at Oxford University. You cannot be a student at Oxford University and say what you just said about Venezuela. Hugo Chavez is the most elected politician on the earth. On the earth. He has won more free and fair elections than any politician on the earth. You spoke, let me answer you. Who said so? Jimmy Carter, last week, last week, Jimmy Carter, that well-known Islamist revolutionist, homophobic, misogynistic tyrant, Jimmy Carter, described last week's election, which I witnessed and you did not, as the most perfect election he has ever observed, better than any election ever held in the United States. That's what Jimmy Carter said, not me. Hugo Chavez 
won a landslide victory against 30 opposition parties. You said that Chavez doesn't allow opposition. 30 opposition parties combined to put up one presidential candidate. You said Capriles was never given one television interview. Capriles was never off the television. I was watching him with my own eyes, day in, day out, all the time I was in Venezuela. Don't shake your head. You're talking nonsense. 95% of the television stations in Venezuela are privately owned and supported Capriles. Me and my wife were on the demonstration of hundreds of thousands of opposition supporters supporting Capriles' election campaign. Just last week, you're talking nonsense. Capriles himself has acknowledged that he was defeated in a free and fair election. I've heard of being more Catholic than the Pope. You're more Capriles than Capriles. <laughs> it's utterly absurd what you're saying. Utterly absurd. And it's a disgrace that you feel that you can say these things with so little knowledge of the true facts. Rich people in Venezuela hate Hugo Chavez because Hugo Chavez has utterly transformed the lot of the poor masses in Venezuela, which is why he keeps getting re-elected. Poverty has been reduced by 75% in the 14 years that Chavez has been in power. He's built 22 universities, making Venezuela the fifth largest student body in the world in a country of just 26 million people. 98% of Venezuelans now eat three meals a day when nobody even counted how many because it wouldn't have been worth doing how many ate three times a day before the Venezuelan revolution. Chavez is regarded by the majority of thinking people in the world as one of the great leaders of the third world. And you should be identifying with him. If you're a champion of gay rights, do you think fascism in Venezuela was a better friend for gay rights than Hugo Chavez? Chavez has freed the gay people in Venezuela. Gay people were out marching in huge numbers for Chavez in Venezuela. Women were out marching in huge numbers for Chavez in Venezuela. He's a champion of women's rights, a champion of black people, a champion of the indigenous people. That's why they all voted for him. Well, welcome back to Sunday Live here on Sky News. Joining me now is a man not known for sitting on the fence. He passionately opposed the invasion of Iraq, and now he feels that Hezbollah is justified in attacking Israel. The Respect MP for Bethnal Green is in our central London studio. A very good evening, a good morning rather to you, Mr. Galloway. Uh, how do you justify your support for Hezbollah and its leader, <laughs> Sheikh Hassan Nasrallah? What a preposterous way to introduce an item, and what a preposterous first question. 24 years ago, on the day my daughter was born, and I've just celebrated her 24th birthday, I had to dash to the maternity hospital to see her given birth from a mass demonstration in London against the Israeli invasion and occupation of Lebanon. Israel has been invading and occupying Lebanon all of my 24-year-old daughter's life. The Hezbollah are a part of the Lebanese national resistance who are trying to drive, having successfully driven most Israelis from their land in 2000, Israel from the rest of their land, and to get back those thousands of Lebanese prisoners who were kidnapped by Israel under the terms of their illegal occupation of Lebanon. It's Israel that's invading Lebanon. It's Israel that's attacking Lebanon, not Lebanon that's attacking Israel. You've just been carrying a report of 10 Israeli soldiers on the border getting ready to invade Lebanon, and you ask us to mourn that operation as if it were some kind of war crime. Israel is invading Lebanon and has killed 30 times you, more you Lebanese civilians button, though, didn't you? than have died in Israel. So it's you who should be justifying the evident bias which is written on every line on your face 
and is in every nuance of your voice and is loaded in every question that you ask. Right. The, uh, you put your finger on the button, though, didn't you, when you said that Hezbollah was set up back in the 1980s in order to remove every Israeli soldier from Lebanese soil. As you said, it achieved that in 2000. No, it didn't. This is a setback. No, it didn't. It, it didn't. This is a key point that you're, you're concealing from your viewers. Israel was forced out of most of the south of Lebanon in 2000. It still occupies a part of Lebanon since 2000. The Sheba Farms thousands area, which is subject to this Lebanese, latest UN draft resolution. Thousands of Lebanese prisoners have been kidnapped by Israel. Hezbollah I spoke and the just a moment Lebanese ago government to the Israeli to Foreign Ministry released. spokesman who said that the three Lebanese who uh, have been uh, captured, perhaps no, you'd no. like to use that word, have been Anna, before a not judge those. These are and not been the through prisoners. a court of law. Oh, please, have a slightly longer memory than four weeks. I'm talking about the thousands of prisoners taken during the 18 years of Israeli occupation, illegal occupation of South Lebanon. These are the prisoners that have to be released in exchange for the Israeli soldiers that were captured at the beginning of this wave of the crisis. Can I ask you about a report that's in uh, today's Sunday Telegraph, which showed that Iran has given Hezbollah long-range uh, missiles capable of targeting any part of Israel. Uh, Iran, according to this uh, Iranian MP who helped found Hezbollah, uh, has also said that he's, Iran has given the organization, organization, author, authorization rather, to target Tel Aviv. Can you blame Israel for wanting to destroy those missiles? But this is preposterous. America has given Israel uh, missiles that can target not just every city in Lebanon, but every city in the Arab and Muslim world, including Iran. Why should America be allowed to give long-range missiles to Israel, including hundreds of nuclear missiles, but Iran because is not allowed to Because it's given it to a terrorist organization. But, but they're not a terrorist organization. Only in the mind of Rupert Murdoch's sky and the Times and the oh, Sun and on. the news of the world. I'm going to stop you there, Mr. Galloway. Prescribed terrorist organizations. Terrorist One man's terrorist state. is yes, another precisely. man's freedom fighter. We precisely. know that perfectly well. Precisely. In most people's eyes, they are deemed to be... No, uh, they, they had a choice, didn't they? they? Let's, let's, let's understand this. They no. had a choice, like the IRA, no, 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 to they're nothing take to do on with politics. The IRA. Listen, Anna. I'm in, saying they had a you, choice you're right, you're to right. absorb one, the idea of politics. They've got two to Hezbollah cabinet ministers. Anna, you one man's on. terrorist is another man's freedom fighter. You are totally wrong in saying that in most people's eyes, Hezbollah are terrorists. In most people's eyes, Israel is a terrorist state. It's the fact that you cannot comprehend that fact that leads to the bias which runs through all of your reporting and every question that you've asked me in this interview. But I'm, Jackie, in no doubt at all about your responsibility in this. And two million of us on the streets of London told you so at the time. And for you now to try and wash your hands of your share of the responsibility, no, I'm, I'm afraid that's a spot I'm that will not out. All two, the perfumes of Arabia these will are not expunge that I mean, spot. And all of your poetry, George, doesn't prevent people from being murdered and massacred in Iraq and Syria at the moment. I'm not washing my hands of what happened in the you past. You killed a that million a people in Iraq. That is a separate... You killed Ugh. a million people in Iraq. It's incredible that you have the brass neck to be sitting here now urging another Iraq war George, after George, if what I you've was still in done. Parliament, I would be there tomorrow, living up to my responsibility yeah. to answer the call of the Iraqi government and people to help to support them. Mm. And the fact that you aren't is something that you will have to live with. Let me ask a final question to you, George. If not bombing, if not intervention, how do we deal with this cancer? Give Iraq the weapons that it's already paid for but haven't been delivered. Strengthen the Peshmerga strengthen the governments of Iraq and Syria and ask Saudi Arabia, Turkey and Iran to fight this battle. It's their battle, not ours. When the Daily Telegraph was offered stolen property, that property being the details of the grand larceny of public funds in the MPs' expenses scandal, which revealed that hundreds of members of parliament, 
some of them the biggest names in the land excluding me of course how disappointed were they when they discovered I wasn't on any of these lists some of the biggest names in the land hundreds of members of parliament had been stealing from the public purse in false in some cases forged expenses claims the telegraph had no compunction about publishing this stolen information whose provenance was theft and rightly so they were hailed they won journalism awards and rightly so their circulation boomed and rightly so because what they were revealing was much more important than the original act of theft which had made these publications possible well that's all that Julian Assange and WikiLeaks have done on a grander scale they have revealed not just important as it is the grubby thievery of our parliamentarians they revealed war crimes now look when I'm dead if you cut me open the word Iraq will run through me like the word Blackpool in a stick of rock and I am with Julian Assange until the end because of his revelation of war crimes committed in Iraq. The Prime Minister is saying we'll that as you are... talk as if this is God. We're talking I'm... about little Rishi Sunak in the fag end of his Prime Ministership. Don't talk to me as if he's come down from the mount with tablets of stone. The things that he says are somehow meant to awe me. They may awe you, they don't awe me. A lot of people have just watched what the Prime Minister said. This is your opportunity to respond to what he said. Well, he says that the, uh, there are forces here at home trying to tear us apart. He is implying you are a divisive well, figure. Well, you have that, run an election campaign that has, that has tried to appeal particularly, and who not won? entirely, who to won? one section of the community. Who won the election? Me or Rishi Sunak? I've got the democratic mandate here, not Rishi Sunak. He didn't even come second. He was lucky to come third. So don't put to me statements made by Rishi Sunak as if I'm supposed to be impressed by them. We he, don't, he don't impress me much. We at Sky have spent some time today on the streets of Rochdale, and there are people who say that they feel intimidated oh, by people like, like you and the people that have supported you. I have just and they, and they And they have pointed I out have... that you have concentrated your campaign on foreign affairs, and they worry that Rochdale I... will not... I have be the a winner. That's my answer to you. I was just elected with a thumping majority by the electorate in Rochdale. That's all that matters to me. So why are there people in the streets of Rochdale well, I, today worried? Well, people voted yesterday and they voted for me. Why is that difficult for you to grasp? Why are there people on the streets worried? There may be people who didn't vote for me who are worried, but the majority the thumping majority voted for me. I've got the mandate, and I'm going to the House of Commons with it. And it's a mandate, you think, to do what? Because there are people that listen to what you say, mm. what you say about whether or not Israel has a right to exist, what you say about what many Jewish people think are we, threatening we, we had slogans. We conversation last night. Why are you reheating it? Because in the light of the Prime Minister's in Don't keep statement. telling me about the Prime Minister as if he was Moses. Do you not respect the Prime Minister? He's, 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 I don't res Do I respect the Prime Minister? I despise the Prime Minister. And guess what? Guess what? Millions and millions and millions of people in this country despise the Prime Minister. I don't respect the Prime Minister at all. You talk about um, your hope for a binational state called Israel-Palestine. 
But how is this possible when Hamas throw their opposition, Fatah, off the roof and uh, Mahmoud Abbas siphons off aid for his own resources such as houses and denies the right of the Jews, uh, the historical rights of the Jews to the Western Wall? Is this really Oxford? <laughs> Mahmoud Abbas denies the right of the Jews to pray at the Western Wall. What are you talking about, man? <laughs> Mahmoud Abbas is an American stooge. Why would he deny the right of Jews to pray at the Western Wall? Where did you get that from? What cesspit of false propaganda did you dredge that allegation from? It's totally absurd. There is no Palestinian, none, not Hamas or anybody else, who denies Jews the right to pray at the Western Wall. I don't know if Hamas threw opposition Fatah people off roofs. If they did, then no one will condemn it more than me as a lifelong supporter of Fatah. I have supported Fatah and President Arafat, God rest his soul, all of my life. You seem not to know that. You seem to imagine that I'm here to defend Hamas. I don't even like Hamas. I would never have voted for Hamas. I hope they get voted out at the next Palestinian election. Where do you get this stuff from? The point is that the Palestinian people are the people whose country has disappeared. And it's now called Israel. The Palestinian people are the people living outside in the refugee camps with a right to go back. That's all. Now, my solution is a democratic one. Everyone who's entitled to live there must be allowed to live there. And they must be allowed to live there as equal citizens. One man, one woman, one vote. What conceivably could be wrong with that? You wouldn't wish anything else for anywhere else. So why would you wish it for Palestine to be otherwise? Look, you can go on supporting Israel if you like. You can go on blaming the Palestinians as terrorists if you like even though they are the victims of the terrorists. But all you'll be doing, I warn you, and you're a young man with more at stake than me, all you'll be doing is continuing to fill the swamp with bitterness and hatred. And a terrible harvest can only come from that.